Nice man. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the most important parts of my UI, of a rate leader's UI, and we're going to be discussing what we need all these add-on slash regards for. The video is sponsored by CurseForge, so big thank you to them. Um, I'm going to start from the top and going to go to the bottom from the most highest priority, the most important add-ons to the rather nice to have, but not a big deal ones. So the most obvious one is obviously uh, the boss mods. You need to have a boss mod so you need to know what the bosses cast. It might be more fun playing without them after seeing Final Fantasy Blind Progress, but if you want to perform good, boss mods is going to make your life a lot easier. And I'm not just talking about getting a boss mod and just slapping on there, but getting something that, you know, and thinking about how you want to show this information. Because I had boss mods before, I was not using them properly. I had it just somewhere on the side, but it was, you know, not my eye center of attention. It was not placed properly. And I got a lot more out of it once I configured it the way I wanted, thought about it a little bit more. So the way I use it is, for example, showing as you see here howling blizzard is going to be cast next it's going to, it's at the bottom of the list i have emphasized and non-emphasized timers and you can read it from bottom to top and the most bottom part is the closest part to the center of my screen which is you know my or a little bit higher than my center of my screen is probably my uh, uh, normal focus point of my eyes so i place it as closer as possible so I know Newton this is the next spell coming and I can just read upwards a lot of people have big wigs or other boss mods which uh, some of the, the the emphasized timers are sorted from bottom to top and then the non-emphasized timers are sorted from the top to bottom or they're in completely different places and timers as you look for them they can jump from one place L let's say I have my timers here and the non-emphasized timer is just whatever. And then just you look at this place, you don't find the timer. And then as you look to the other place, to the non-emphasized place, that timer has jumped to the emphasized place. And then you have to look back to again see it. And it's it can be very confusing. I, this may sound like, nah, this never happens, Scribe. But I can guarantee you this happens a lot if you're a rate leader and you, you're actually looking at these timers. And you should. So next up, we have uh, combat lock readers. Now, I'm using details. I'm going pretty ham on it. You don't have to do what I'm doing. It's completely fine to play with it. And, and in fact, it might be worse for you if you're playing, let's say, a melee uh, who needs to be perhaps a little bit more zoomed in and it's his sc screen space is a lot more important to them because they have to react to abilities quickly and see what's under them. Oftentimes there's a zone spawning in melee that you need to watch or see where the boss is facing so that you, know, you can dodge the cleave or whatever. What I'm using the viewport add-on uh, in in connection to the details as well is because that's the only thing I'm using it for basically um, it's zooming me out from my game um, allowing me to technically see more from the left and right but it's because it's zooming me out it's harder to see those small details the main, main things you should focus on is I would say DPS after that damage sorry death death locks those are super important because you want to be able to know what you guys are wiping to what caused the first death? What caused the next death? Death locks super important. Make sure you use it. Mouse over them. Check them. Understand that if they use their personals or not. Reading the death lock, and uh, so I use healing meters actually most of the time only to check if they use health zones or tonics. The people I never look at the healing themselves, and then damage taken is to see if you know people are targeting the proper targets, and uh, damage taken by spell is. Um, to see what is actually the thing that's destroying us. Is it the constant damage? Is it the burst damage? Did we leave a, let a cast go through? It's usually quite easy to see. Let's say the interrupts on Kel'Thuzad, you can quickly see, tech, check that cast. Did any go through? I can't see any here, so we're good, right? And uh, you can see how often they went through and stuff like that really quickly. Then the next thing up is the rate frames. Um, I'm using grid two on the top left, you can see. I have it uh, configured in a way where I don't see the power of uh, people, the mana or energy or rage or whatever. Instead, I see the absorb, and I think absorbs are massive to see on uh, on rate frames. As a rate leader, really, really massive. You can you could be doing some stupid panic calls while a person has you know a, a full life cocoon with a ruptured shield or huge spirit shell or whatever. 
everybody might be low health but might have a huge spirit shell that just came a bit late let's say and you might be just panic holding rallies and stuff it's just it's just very very dumb not to track absorbs you have to track absorbs it's it's just huge it's it's more important than any mana or anything you would track uh, aside from that for uh, grit uh, i use uh, priority or well like priority ordered uh debuff tracking so on let's say this top left part i would track many spells but they would have a certain priority and uh, most of the time you want to put only one there because you know multiple spells can happen at once and then you don't get the info which is which this system is bad for but the benefit of this system is that uh, you can you, you know exactly where an ability will be and most of the time there are not that many abilities in the boss fight that you want to track simultaneously if there are though you can make growing bars um which i'm not using but you can do that um to track you know every buff on the top and every debuff on the bottom and then you can apply black listers or white lists or whatever you prefer uh, but i'm doing it priority based i would also encourage you to use class colors in a distinct proper way i mean i think my way is the obviously the better way because that's why i'm using it uh people tend to make it all black and uh or like you know this shadowed out classic lui style and have the class uh, the, the font colored i do not prefer that i think it's harder to distinguish but uh in, in terms of look i do prefer it i think it looks better like there's no disagreement there i just think performance wise it's just worse but that's why i'm not using it and uh, i don't think you should use it either but up to you of course and maybe you're uh, you know you prefer style over performance that's fine next up we have raid cooldown trackers okay so this is like this is where it gets to like rate leader specific i guess details uh, tracking a lot of them is also but this is like the thing that a lot of people won't have i think you should be tracking raid cooldowns even without being a raid leader but obviously it's the raid leader inside me talking um i don't think that the reason my reasoning is they don't take that much space so you could just put them on the side and not worry about them and then maybe you will need them one day and i can guarantee you you will need them one day if you know how to use them properly i have previously before i was a raid leader i have used other people's rallies as a personal for me when there was no externals available you can do a lot of things if you know how to play the game if you can't soak something and you're supposed to soak you can say instead of saying i can't soak or not saying anything which is even worse you can say narcolis i can't soak you go in there with bubble you can make the decision and take that away from uh, turning it into a discussion and you know seven people running in there and to soak because you didn't soak you can't do it or whatever right but as a raid leader obviously you can uh, like what i do is uh, when i see somebody dead i can before he makes a call i can track somebody else can soak with externals i see somebody is getting slapped with some big damage i see rebel sniper by the sword tanking let's say and this uh, i can see it ending earlier i can give him a sack and i can say narco sack him and then the biggest thing obviously the raid cooldowns um which again most of the time chris handles them uh, our healing officer but uh i do tend to often call the panic stuff scars bubble scars bubble scars bubble that uh when i see something's going wrong i very often call for healing cooldowns or when he's not here on farm raids i also call all, all of them but uh tracking them absolute must it, as for a raid leader you need to have this 100 percent if you want to be good i would say i mean you need to have all but i guess roars next into immunities next into externals next and then big personals which you can use for soaking uh into the small personals but this is this i would say is like the least important thing in the whole tracking process on top of that not just defensives you can also track the offensive cooldowns um you can see by me covering my ERT on KT because it's so uh, huge by covering from my note, it's not that important to track all of this. Uh, it's very rare that you need to actually look at it, but sometimes it can give you very good info. Let's say we push the phase fast under three minutes. I want to see uh, if Canix is, uh, you know, Incarn is going to be ready for the next one, for the next KT phase or whatever it is, right? I, I, if, 
most of the time I use this honestly for spying on my guildmates to see if they are using the cooldowns at the correct time. Are they using it on pull on the boss, or are they using it in the or you know every boss phase, or are they using it in the intermission? And depending on that, not just to like flame them for doing the right or wrong thing, I can then always say, okay, everybody do, do the same thing that you're doing. But except for two, three people that I pick to juggle the DPS from one thing to the other. And more often times you won't see this mid-fight. You can, but you won't like be making these changes mid-fight. But if you look at VODs or recordings, you can look at this. You can easily see where it is. You can also check logs, but it's going to take you way longer time than just on the moment looking here. Oh, okay. Revis used it one and a half, uh, you know, one minute, ten seconds ago. So that's probably the intermission. I instantly know it. So that's the rate cooldown trackers. Um, then we have small bits here and there. That's how I noted it down. Uh, we have the combat timer. Uh, very important. You can use the details one as well, but I recommend making it a bit bigger and because this is quite an important thing. Um, the combat rest timer. Some people play without this. I have no idea how that's impossible. Uh, I would definitely recommend just putting it on there. If you are a druid, in this case, I guess you don't really need it. You have your own spell anyways. Then we have the notes. The You can use ERT, you can use angry assignments. Doesn't really matter, I think, that much. Um, honestly, we use this nowadays mostly to just propagate data or add-ons to just send it to everyone you don't even have to use notes most of the time uh, for bigger bosses like on sylvanas you will see we don't use any notes actually we just uh, delete it completely use a spreadsheet because it's just getting too much but just for convenience it's nice to have uh, for rate leader calls you know i often you know, I, I do look at this sometimes it's, it's nice to have but most of it uh, if it gets too big just use a spreadsheet this is you know I, like this is on the edge this is you know it's I usually block these out and this is just for add-on communication, what we have down here. So if it gets any long, bigger than this, you should definitely use a spreadsheet and just look at that. Uh, now people do use timers or timed notes, uh, which is a weird thing, but we don't we don't really do that. Uh, maybe we're just too old brain and the, you know, the new teams need to come and punish us for not using the full extent of uh, an add-on, but uh, I just don't see it being that used, I guess. Oh, and then lastly, a lot of people, what they tend not to do is showing the person one percentiles, and you can see it here. Uh, let's say, um, yeah, a perfect example, remnant, right? We go into 20, like, let's say you want to stop at 24% and let the outside team finish. There's a huge difference between 24.0 and 24.9. And what most uh, add-ons do is either they round up or they truncate the last percent and just ignore it. Either way, is it's bad. You don't wanna you don't wanna use that. Just show the percent one. Percent one can be massive on big ads. Uh, many bosses phase on certain, you know, percent ones. Let's say so they don't phase on seventy percent, but they phase on seventy point five percent. It's actually almost every boss is uh, whenever they phase it's always point five something. So make sure to track the percentiles. Uh, you can track it on the boss frames as well. I only do it on target and play there. I just like my boss frames as small as possible, uh, but in return, keep them a bit closer to my UI. But uh, you can do whatever you want. Both are fine. I also don't track cast bars on my boss frames. I, I really make them very small and close to my UI. I mean, the rest of the UI, honestly, it's up to you, right? What unit frames you use for your personal stuff, what uh, uh, action bars to use, it won't affect your rate leading that much. Uh, I have my own thing. I, you know, for example, I don't track uh, anything that doesn't have a cooldown on bars, except for, you know, here they have stacks and maybe a couple spells, so I, just so I see the GCDs. Otherwise, I don't have a GCD thing that shows me. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's not going to affect you that much. So that's it for the rate leading UI part. Now, how to get uh, my add ons, guys, you can. Uh, Check probably on the description, there's going to be some links that link to my add-on list on the CurseForge website. Um, you can get the add-ons uh, uh, from CurseForge, get more add-ons and just uh, search for them one by one. I mean, th there's going to be the list that uh, tells you actually by clicking, you can download it. But you can also find more add-ons that are similar or, you know, go by category and find them. I, I sometimes go in here and just like, but I'm hopeless, right, or bored. I sometimes just go here and 
look up or when I'm trying something new, like, let's say PvP, I often go and just check here if there's anything new regarding this specific part of the game that I haven't looked at or rate frames, for example. Uh, there is always, uh, you know, rate frames are never perfect, so sometimes you just go in here and see if something new is popping up. And uh, it can be uh, exciting, it can be new, and trying out some things, whatever works for you. Uh, so feel free to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, most items you can just type in and, and find. Uh, you can also see the popular ones. I actually have, oh wow, new popular ones. Last time I checked, there was, uh, there was a different list. Maybe I was checking something else. But yeah, feel free to do that. And uh, also cool thing about CurseWatch, which I like, like that's the biggest thing for me is that they give 70% of their revenue here from these ads um, to the mod authors, which helps them create add-ons. They also support add-on creators in general. If you apply to their program, you can get uh, funding for uh, apps or add-ons and stuff like that. So that's it for the video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to give feedback in the comments and flame me hard if I forgot an important add-on. I'm sorry. Bye-bye.